Us. We've got Clinton Morrison with us as well. Afternoon, Clinton. Afternoon, mate. <laughs> How you doing? You all right? Mm, yeah, I'm all right, but I don't really like waiting. I'm like, Nadam, why are we talking about the cricket? They've been not good enough in England. I don't understand why we're talking about cricket. I got up this morning to watch it, thinking they got a chance of winning. Did they get bowled out? It's been a story of the series. Yeah, it's good to have you on, Clinton. That's the, know, the exact mate, energy you need to deliver to Steve exactly, for this whole show. Exactly. <laughs> uh, right, let's start with, with Everton, actually. We'll get to the build-up at, uh, at Anfield at about one o'clock. I can just see that the Liverpool team are arriving, but across Stanley Park, uh, Rafa Benitez's future's in doubt. It's been reported that the board met last night to hold emergency talks after their two-one defeat to Norwich. The Athletics football correspondent David Unstein saying this, no official word from Everton as yet, but Rafael Benitez's departure as manager is coming one win in their last 13 Premier League games. They've lost nine of them. If you think maybe Everton's aspirations might have been top six, they are 15 points behind Spurs in six. Then actually, Connor, you might have seen his final game in charge, potentially. Yeah, it, it didn't feel good. Uh, Rafa Benitez took a long time to come out for those post-match interviews yesterday. There was even, you know, people suggesting, was was he going to come? What Would he be sacked there and then? Um, that's how bad it feels. I mean, I think first and foremost, we'll say, you know, Rafa Benitez has been a great guy to deal with. He's a real gentleman. Um, you know, for, for, for people on, uh, you know watching on the outside, he, he's one of those guys, he'll always thank you after an interview. Not many managers will do that. He's that sort of, you know, he's a gentleman. Um, and you can tell he's a good guy and, and his heart is in the right place and those kind of things. Unfortunately, they don't matter when it comes to, to this sort of situation, the run of form that, that Everton are on. Our position at, at Carroll Road when we're doing Match of the Day is on the far side from where the dugouts are and we come down the back of that stand and we walk through the area where the visiting fans are to get onto the pitch to come round to do the interviews. So I was coming through the Everton fans as they were departing Carroll Road yesterday and and it was it was a real toxic atmosphere and, and, and I'm not blaming Everton fans for that but they, some of them were almost turning on each other because some fans you know, were insistent to sing this Rafa get out of our club and you know to, to be booing on the team and then others were saying well you've got to support the team while well, he's still our manager you've got to support him and there was a real conflict there um, and, and I think it just sums up the, the, the state that they are in I've done quite a few of Everton's recent games last weekend I was at uh, Hull in the FA Cup when it was taken to extra time and Everton eventually scraped through against the team in the bottom half of the championship they're playing dreadfully I mean you look on paper the squad the individuals there that midfield to Coure and Andre Gomez and Alan and these guys these are these are good international players they should be very very good um, they can't pick a pass at the moment the mistakes for the goals yesterday guys like Seamus Coleman who's been a, a wonderful um, representative of Ever Everton over the years and he's never let them down or whatever but he was giving passes away that was leading to goals it's just a shambles at the moment and it, it is very difficult to see how he stays on from here it may take time they'll have to get their ducks in a row it's a very quick rotation from Ancelotti leaving at the back of last season what sort of you know legacy planning is in place etc but it, it seems inevitable that Rafa will have to go now the thing is Clinton the Ducks aren't in a row are they the Ducks are all over the place they don't have a director of football to appoint a new manager so presumably if they appoint a new manager um, then it would be the chairman doing it and then bringing in a, a director of football he's just spent 25 million pounds on Vitali Mikalenka. they've just sold Luka Dinja a top player who clearly had a breakdown in his relationship with Rafa Benitez, so they could have replaced Rafa and found a manager who he'd have a better relationship with. Doesn't feel like there's a plan, does it? No, there's not been a plan. There's not been a plan, plan ever for years, in, in my opinion. They've not spent well, and I think that's why the director of football had to go, and Rafa wanted to take charge of all the signings, so he's brought in these signings in, in this window. But for me, it's always been a big struggle. I knew it was going to be a big struggle for Rafa Benitez going there. I, I don't know if you was on Crossy, but when he first ever, at the start, when he got that job, we said it's going to be, it'll be huge for Rafa, and he started off ever so well, so the Everton fans got behind him, but there was always going to be this dip in form but the thing is is once you've been a legend or such a good manager at Liverpool there's always going to be hard times when you start losing matches and that's the problem at the moment no disrespect to Norwich you shouldn't be going to Norwich and getting beat convincingly like they did um yesterday and it just wasn't good enough I know it's basic mistakes and it can happen you have to credit Norwich it was a good performance and they started scoring goals which Norwich have struggled to do but it's not been good enough for Everton and I think Rafa is going to be under huge pressure but what do you do do you sack him now and he's brought in a few players or or do you wait to the end of the season and when you said about finishing in the top six absolutely no chance they need to be looking over their shoulder they could be in a relegation battle yeah, well, they're certainly not going to finish in the top six now. It might have been what they <laughs> thought they were going to do at the start of the season. Although there is part of me, Nadim, that just wonders, 
was this just always bound to fail? Can you really, in 2021 as it was, afford to bring a manager in and be on the back foot from the word go? Can you afford to? I think uh, I think that's a good question. But to talk about something which we did, because earlier in, before the season started, we spoke with Seamus Coleman, didn't we? Oh, yeah. And um, not to plug our own show or anything, but yeah, we did do that. <laughs> and he was very specific and he said, he said it out loud. He said, our goal this year is to get into Europe by the end of the season. He called it for how he saw it. He called it for what the year before was like and what the players were like at the start of the season. So they had a level of belief there and who are we to say that, you know, they were wrong. From that point now, a lot of things have gone wrong. You know, they've had injuries, they've had dips in form and stuff like this. And as Clinton's alluding to there, when somebody like Rafa Benitez is in Liverpool, you think about the red of Liverpool, not the blue of Everton. And when he arrives, arrive like an Everton fan, has probably has tons of horrible memories of Rafa Benitez and real sort of like hatred and distrust and all sorts for him. So for him to be leading your team is hard. And I think you'd be hoping that, well, from the outside, if he would, if he did exceptionally well for Everton four years, it still might not be enough for some Everton fans. So for him to not have done that well and the team to be struggling, looking the way it, it does at the moment, just makes it that much worse. So yeah, I suppose the foundational side of things was always going to be tough, but the players believed at the start of the season they could do something, otherwise they wouldn't have said it. Still in a job for now, of course, let's just underline that, but it may be that he's done his last interviews as Everton manager. Uh, this is what he said to Connor following that defeat to Norwich. Raf, it's obviously a very disappointing result for you. How, how damaging do you think it is? I'm really disappointed because obviously we were coming here thinking about to win disappointed for the fans that they were making a long travel to come here and support the team so it's uh, difficult because we have had the, the same situation in the past I think we were not uh, doing bad and then we concede two goals with our own mistakes then you have an, again another mountain to climb and then we make the, the things difficult for us you say mountain to climb does the job as a whole feel a mountain to climb at the moment well professional I'm just concentrated on to prepare uh, the next training session, the next games, and that's it. Very quick fire, the two goals, like 94 seconds between the two of them, which which, which is obviously rare, but that, were you so disappointed your defence didn't reconfigure? I'm disappointed that we don't learn, so we made the same mistakes in the past, and we continue making similar mistakes, and we have been talking about that, we have been working on that, but it seems that the, when we are on the pitch, uh, we have uh, a little bit of anxiety and we made these kind of mistakes. Does this feel the, the lowest moment of the job for you so far? It's really disappointing because we are working so hard. So we came here to fix uh, issues. Little by little we are doing things that, in my opinion, will be good for the future, bringing players, improving players. But the reality is that we have to win on the pitch. So still we have two games in hand, but it uh, doesn't change too much if we don't learn and we don't make less mistakes. So you say for the future, do you think, do the Everton fans need to be patient for that to happen? Well, they say that they, we will continue working hard, trying to do our best. Well, let's speak to an Everton fan, shall we? From the Blue Room podcast, Les Roberts has joined us. Uh, afternoon, Les, are you feeling patient? Um, not really. That, that ship sailed a few games ago, I think, for me. Mm. So, Clinton was just saying at the moment, obviously Everton have got to look over their shoulders. Is it the right time for Rafa Benitez to leave or not? Um... Yeah, I mean, we're definitely looking over our shoulders now. We've been we've been sort of flirting with this this idea of a relegation scrap for the last few weeks, and I think yesterday it sort of hammered home just how bad we are. Uh, I think Norwich are pretty much widely regarded as the worst team in the league, and they hands down beat us yesterday fair and square. Can have no complaints with the uh, the manner of that defeat from the Norwich perspective, but from our perspective, it was dreadful. As Benitez said, then we're making the same same mistakes every single week. Um, you just look at the last two games, we've played Brighton and Norwich, two teams who've been struggling to score goals all season and we've been 2-0 down in 20 minutes. I think that's the 19th time we've gone behind first in a game this season. I just can't keep doing that and it, it is stupid mistakes. You know, you can put it down to individual errors and stuff like that, but it all falls on the manager in the end. He's setting up the team to go out and win each game and they're not doing that. He's tried all sorts of formations, um, none of them are working. I think yesterday it just hit home how bad things were when Rondon was playing number 10, really, which was just an absolutely staggering thing to do. Um, it's just baffling decisions like that. It, you know, he dropped Luca Dean against Arsenal and he put Ben Godfrey at left back, which I had no issue with because he wants the defensive left back. Ben Godfrey plays well there. He won the game. That's fine. Then that rumbled on 
then that led to Luca Dean leaving. There was obviously issues between the two of them. I've no problem with Luca Dean leaving, really. You know, he's, he's at an age where we probably needed to sell him in the next year or two if we're going to get any money back. And the club needs money, believe me. So that's fine. It's just the manner it was handled. There's just a lot of things. Nothing's working at Evan at the minute. Um, and he's right and he's, he's trying to undo sort of five years worth of bad managerial appointments and bad recruitment but to have the luxury you've got to get results and he's just not doing that yeah. Crossy, Crossy, Crossy sorry Nate if, um, just a quick one it's the first time I'm going to agree with an Everton fan because usually they give me a lot of stick but because of <laughs> some of the things I say I must agree with him I, no disrespect to Rondon but Rondon was bought as a backup number nine you go to Norwich and if Richarlison's good enough to come on, on I mean fit enough to come on just after half time why not start him because he comes on and makes a big difference you've got <laughs> El, the new signing El Ghazi in there as well you've got Andros Townsend who's just coming back from fitness I get that but he scored the winning go in the um the FA Cup game against Hull play your best team when you're going to Norwich because that is the game where you need to to win and for me Lucas Dinia that was the one I didn't like what a player he, he's been at ever and, and then you go and you basically leave him and then you get rid of him and he goes to Aston Villa he's going to be a good signing for Aston Villa so it's just Rafa I don't understand I, listen I've never played under Rafa Benitez I think he's a brilliant manager because the things he's done but it's not working at ever and at this moment he's, he's, he's for me he's such a defensive um kind of um, coach and I think these Everton fans always like to be on the front foot and at the moment they're not doing that just on that can I just can I just jump in on, on sure, being a yeah, defensive coach because he's re I mean we were sold in the summer obviously it was a, it was a pretty hard sell from the club um, appointing former Liverpool manager but I think a lot of us sort of got our heads around it in the fact that he's a pragmatic manager he'll sort out your defence he'll, he'll steady the ship he'll keep the team solid and it's been anything but he, he can't seem to organise the defence I don't know if it's the defenders he's working with at Everton because I mean there are some mishaps in that defence it's it, it's like a quick counter attack and it's wide open um, we've been conceding the same goal from corners for the for the entire season where we leave like three players unmarked at the back post but he doesn't seem to be able to arrange this defence and that I think I've, I've been surprised at how bad he's actually been as a manager and setting up a team and that's that's why I'm feeling now that he's got to go because it's he's tried pretty much every single permutation he possibly can with those players and aside from the first few games nothing's worked Les with that um, do you see how much you think comes down to him and how much comes down to the players because I, you, you, I think you agree with them in saying that they've been ha they've been making so many like really bad mistakes that lead to goals and you know at the highest level mistake can cost you the whole game so do you think the like do you think the players fully believe in what he's doing and they're just bang out of form? Or do you think there's like something else to this? Because like I say, there's a there's a real mix because you know, if you want to talk about Rondon playing the ten, like nobody's gonna agree that that's the right thing to do. But then mm. if you're watching your team make mistakes, like how much is that down to the manager? Yeah, I mean that's sort of he has been given a pass in a few games, I think, because I think Michael Keane in particular has made a lot of mistakes this season. Um, and obviously when you set your team up, can't legislate for that the players are going to do that um, but I think it, I think with each passing game that the team don't win the confidence drops and the confidence drops and you say it's been what is it six points in the last 36 points yeah. six out of 36 or 39 I think Yeah. when you're on a run like that confidence is going to be at an all time low and if you're in that team you don't want to make a mistake and I think as a player if you're thinking I don't want a mistake invariably you probably will make a mistake at some point because it's on your mind and then you can see with Michael Keane when it happens his head goes completely his confidence is shattered and I think that permeates through the team and it's it's really difficult you can't put it all on the players you can't put it all on the manager it's a combination of the two for me but it all comes down to the manager in the end you know he's the one who carries the can ultimately and if he if you can't get results out of this squad, which we've given the players a lot of stick over the years because every single season we're having the same conversations that these players have got no character, you know, the down tools for the manager. We, we have the same conversation every year, but it's never been this bad. I don't think any of them have down tools. It doesn't, it doesn't look like that to me. They just seem to be... So this is worse than under Marco Silva pressure. then, Les? It feels it. It definitely feels it. I mean, I, I always sort of hark back. We've, we've had two of the worst seasons in my lifetime were 93, 94 and 97, 98 mm -hmm. when we escaped relegation on the last day in both seasons this for me feels as bad as that because nothing's working at all honestly I've, I've got a stat on that as well so uh, the number of Everton defeats after 19 games in the Premier League 93, 94 
we've had nine defeats in 19. 97, 98, it was 10. In 21, 22, it's 10. So we're on a par with those those seasons. And getting 19 points in 19 games, that's relegation form, no matter you know who's in your team, who's playing for you, what injuries you've had. We're in a relegation scrap. Thing is, though, Les, serious clubs need serious directors of football. And Everton mm-hmm. haven't got one at the minute. They've just obviously got rid of one in, in Marcel Brand. So if you were out there, right, and you were a top sporting director, you want to come into a club where you can pick the manager. And given yeah. you haven't got one at the minute, if you sack Rafa Benitez, then Farhad Mashiri has to appoint a manager. Mm-hmm. And if a new manager's just come in, well, a director of football is probably not going to want to walk in the building at that point, are they? Well, this is, this is the problem we've had since Mashiri came in. We, we've tried every single sort of type of manager you can think of. We've had like Kuman, who was the legendary player, Allardyce, the firefighter, Silver, the young promising manager, um, Ancelotti, the legendary manager, and then Benitez, and Duncan Ferguson in the middle of all that. There's been no succession plan. It's, it, it, it's like the whole club from top to bottom, nothing's working at all. And as you say, he's, you know, Mashiri, there's been, no one really knew what Marcel Brands did because you could never tell who was actually signing the plays because the profile of play was that scatter gun it was just like there was no plan and you think if well if you know he's a respected director of football surely the plan should be something coherent and it wasn't and then Marcel Brands got the ball as Mishiri threw everything in with Benitez and we're in this position now where yeah you're right you know no no respected director of football is going to want to come to this club because they're thinking I'm going to have to deal with the head case in the boardroom there you keep sticking his oar in I mean it is club and it is money that's sound but you know, you've got to get someone who can make football decisions in charge of the football. And there seems to be too much interference from above. So no one's going to touch us there. And if you're looking at appointing a new manager, they've got to come in and basically steady the ship for the next four months until the end of the season and keep us up, essentially. And they could be on a bit of a hide into nothing there. You just don't know. But we've also got a plan for the long term as well. You know, we need a succession plan for next season. And that includes if we went down. So you, I just don't know what sort of profile manager they would go for now. Mm. It's 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 a proper mess. Well, I, I hope we've let you get some stuff off your chest, Les. Uh, thanks for coming on. <laughs> no problems. Appreciate it. Man. <laughs> Les Roberts there from the Blue Room podcast. Breaking news, which we'll have more on a second in the last two minutes. Everton have tweeted, Everton Football Club can confirm the departure of Rafael Benitez as first team manager. Rafael Benitez out at Goodison Park. Everton fans, 85058 and at Five Live Sport. Get in touch. Let us know what you think of the confirmation that Rafael Benitez is no longer the Everton manager. So this is the statement on the Everton website. It's very sure. Everton Football Club can confirm the departure of Rafael Benitez as first team manager. Benitez, who joined Everton in June 2021, has left the club with immediate effect. An update on a permanent replacement will be made in due course. Let's go back to Anfield. Stephen Warnock is our co-commentator there. Of course, played under Rafa at Liverpool. Your thoughts, Stephen? Not surprised. Yeah, uh, I think it's been coming. I think the the Everton van, fans have voiced their opinions now for the uh, a large part of the season. It was probably one of those appointments that never really fitted. If I'm being completely honest, I was very surprised when he went for the job. Surprised that Mashiri thought that the fans would accept it, but. Ultimately, when you look at the decisions that have been made and the way that the team have played, there hasn't been a real style, there hasn't been a real identity of how they're they're wanting to play the football. Everyone thought Rafa Benitez would come in and make them hard to beat. If anything, they look very easy to beat, they look very easy to play against. And um, yeah, not surprised by that whatsoever, Steve. One win in their last 13 Premier League games. Was this always doomed? to failure you kind of knew didn't you as soon as things started going wrong his relationship with the fans was bound to spiral wasn't it 100 percent, and that's why it was always so difficult for him to go into the club i spoke when he got the job and people were saying well what 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 can he do and i said the only thing he will do is he'll give it 100 percent. and there's no doubt and he's done that he's found it very difficult very difficult with the fans he had to get off to a good start now he did that then he lost key players but then there's been other factors within the club that you look at. The situation with Luca Dean, um, highly thought of player at Everton. Then he's out of the team, he's sold, and Everton fans are very disgruntled against that decision. I think there's many more factors as well, but he was on a hide into nothing. Listen, the only way he was going to do something was with, if, is if he finished above Liverpool in the league. That's the that's the be all and end all of it. I'm pretty sure that's the second time in Benitez's career that he's replaced Angelotti and then been sacked. Correct. After Real Madrid, 2016. 
the uh, the name that's going to come up immediately, Stephen, is certainly the bookies' favourite. He was before Benitez was sacked. Is Wayne Rooney? Yeah, I think he will get a mention. Now it's up to Wayne where he feels that he's at if he was offered the job and. I think it'd be very difficult for him to turn down. I think from Everton's point of view, from a fan's point of view, it's, well, is he experienced enough? Is that time at Derby enough to bring him into the club? One thing he'd certainly get is the respect of both the fans and the players. I'm sure that'd, that'd come with the job. But um, I think the choice that I look at, and Brighton fans won't want me to say this, is, is Graham Potter. Everton fans want a, an open, expansive style of football. They get that with Graham Potter. I think what you see with him is he's, he's really good at man management as well, very calm. But this appointment, and we, how many times have we said this of late with Mishiri coming into the club? This appointment has to be the right one. This has to be correct. I don't think Duncan Ferguson's the right choice, if I'm being completely honest. That's my first initial thoughts. I'm sure he'll come in as temporary manager and I'm sure he'll want the job as well. But for me, I think they need to go away a little bit from him and, and look elsewhere. But there's been a massive power struggle at Everton and Benitez has effectively seen off some big names, including a head of recruitment. They've just sold a top player in Dinya because he had a massive fallout with the manager and then they've sacked the manager. So they could have kept him. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, a statement from Luca Dean when he left the club was how much he loved the club. If he loved it that much and he knew about the situation of Rafa Benitez, we all knew he was one or two games away from losing his job, but he still didn't want to stay and, and wait for him to leave. It's very interesting. Afternoon, welcome back to Premier League Sunday. About an hour ago, Everton confirmed that they have sacked Rafa Benitez after less than seven months in charge. That 2-1 defeat to Norwich yesterday meant they've only won one of their last 13 games. They're 15th in the table. They're only six points above the relegation zone. Stephen Warnock is still with us. Uh, delighted to say we're also joined by Danny Murphy, who's on Match of the Day 2 tonight. Afternoon, Danny. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, I'm also delighted to say that we've got the former Everton forward James McFadden with us. I think if we did Everton with just two former Liverpool players, <laughs> people, James, might might ask some questions. How are you doing? I'm all right, how are you? Yeah, good. Let me just read the uh, very short statement from Everton then, first of all. Uh, Everton can confirm the departure of Rafael Benitez as first team manager. Benitez joined in, Ever in June in 2021, has left the club with immediate effect. An update on a permanent replacement will be made in due course. I mean, they didn't even do the like customary thanks for your efforts. That's a pretty cold end to a pretty cold tenure, James. Yeah, it is. But I think that, you know, the performances, results have been really poor, but the performance levels have been have been below poor for me. Uh, I think it was a strange appointment. I can understand you know, the, the kind of pedigree that Rafa had, but the connection to Liverpool, the comments that he came away with whilst Liverpool manager, the Everton fans didn't want him as manager. So for me, it was only a matter of time and it's time now to, to, to look forward and, you know, try and try and get the right person in. Is this always going to happen, Danny? Yes. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I mean, a few wins might have prolonged it, a month or two of decent form and performances might give him longer but he was always uh, climbing a mountain when he got the job um, the strangest thing about it of course is the fact that it looked like in this particular window that they were backing him they got mm. rid of the whole recruitment team as we know uh, they let him sell Dinier he was one of their you know, better players, if you like. And then, of course, the two signings of the two fullbacks, you would think that Rafa had a say in both of those, of course. And then to completely disregard those decisions and then just get rid of him as well. It, it's an absolute shambles at the moment there, isn't it? And, and there's no real obvious candidate that I can think of who's going to come in and guarantee them success. It's a, it's a massive, massive club, but it's got massive problems. That's the first thing, James, that struck me, actually, is that... They've literally just sold one of their best players. And it was clear from the, the statement that Luca Dini made on, on Instagram that, you know, you didn't have to read far between the lines to know that him and him and Rafa Benitez had a massive fallout and therefore he felt he had to go. Well, they've sat in the manager about 72 hours later. If they brought in somebody new, maybe they could have kept him. Yeah, I think that's, you know, Danny's spot on. I think, you know, it was obviously a, a personal issue between Rafa and Luca Dini and... You know, the, the board looked like they were back in the manager. Uh, obviously, he's brought in Mikalenko. Nathan Patterson uh, is, is a good player, good player for the future as well. But I think if you're going to spend, you know, the round about the same money as, as you're recruiting for, for Luca Dean going, 
it suggested that they were willing to back Rafa. Um, I, I, I don't know, but it's not a surprise. You know, the form isn't a surprise. The performance levels, it's been the same. It's been pretty consistently poor. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the the plan was to get rid of the med, head of medical as well. Mm. Uh, Marcel Brands is, is obviously left as well. So it looked like Rafa was in control of everything. So to Steve, then were, they, were they not just and leave? Sorry. No, on you go. I was going to say, do you think they're just working their way through the problems, Everton? Is it more that they got rid of Brands? He probably wasn't the problem to them. Then they've worked their way through. dinia has gone as well. And they, just, they were just working I, I think, their way through the issues. I think it issues. looks like it was... These were problems that Rafa identified. This is what it looks like. It looks like Rafa Benitez had decided the recruitment wasn't good enough, the medical side wasn't good enough. He didn't want players there that, that, that were questioning his methods. So it looks it looks like they'd backed him. Because these are big decisions to make. These are, these are you know, parts of the club that, that are in place at most clubs, regardless of who's in charge. And the manager has to fit in with the, the kind of idea and philosophy of the club. But Rafa came in and obviously decided it's not how he wants to work. It's not good enough for him. And the, and the board and, and the owners have, have, have backed him. But to turn around now and say, right, it's time for the manager to go. We need a new direction. Well, you know, there's a lot of work needing done. I think that the point about Luca Dean is, is, is a massive one because he's been a big player forever. He signed a new contract last year, um, a long-term contract. And Rafa was, you know, very vocal about the problem there. So that, to me, looked like a personal problem. I don't think it was an issue against the club. Certainly with the, the reaction from, or, or certainly the, the social media post from Luca Dean when he, when he left to go to Aston Villa. So I think if you're, if you're of a mind that the manager's under pressure, you have to try and, someone has to try and sort that out and, and, and figure out what the problem is. But, you know, the manager's gone now. I think it was... It was always going to happen. I, I, I don't think it was ever going to end well for him. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of things that need to be sorted out now forever. There is a lot of things, Danny, and you, you were kind of alluding to what might come next. I mean, every time Everton needs a new manager, and this will be the sixth time they've needed one in six years, Graham Potter's name comes up. If you were Graham Potter, you've got an incredibly safe job at Brighton, massively long contract. Would you want to be Everton's sixth manager in six years? No. But you never know somebody's individual motivations. I would be very, very surprised to see Graham Potter leave Brighton for Everton. He, he probably somewhere down the line will think maybe he'll have bigger fish to fry than that. You know how well he's doing. Um, you're right, a good, a good CEO, a good chairman, um, very good recruitment policy. I think Everton have to be careful not to focus just solely on who's going to come in next as a manager. You're talking about rebuilding the structure of the club, having a philosophy having something in place that doesn't get broken every time a manager goes. Um, obviously, the last head of recruitment struggled. Mm. So get, getting, the back, getting the structure in the background right first and then having a philosophy and bringing in a manager and a coach. I know there's not much time to do this, of course, but bringing in a manager and a coach who is on board with that philosophy <laughs> rather than the other way around. It's, it's, un, it's unusual for a coach to go in and, and set all that up himself, although that's what Rafa wants us to do. That's, that was partly his downfall at Liverpool in the end. So there's, there's not much positivity on the horizon at the moment. First and foremost, they've got to stay in the division. I think they will. I think they've got enough, even though their form's been poor. They're lucky that there's some sides below them who are even worse. Um, but that, that has to be the priority now. And then think about the structure of the club and the growth of the club further down the line. The only thing, Stephen, that surprises me about this is that Everton have just got rid of the director of football and your director of football is supposed to be the guy who appoints the new manager. So unless they've got somebody up their sleeve, it's going to be Farhad Mashiri who appoints the next manager, which just seems to be all backwards. Yeah, and I think if you read... I mean, I know what you're saying there, but from what you hear in the round football clubs and, and what goes on... Farad Mashiri still made the call on Rafa Benitez. It wasn't Marcel Brands. I don't think Marcel Brands was particularly happy with the appointment of Rafa Benitez. He mm. wanted to go a different way, but then was overruled by Farad Mashiri. You, you look at Marcel Brands as well, and you say, well, who did he bring into the club and what did he add value to the club? Not much. 
not much at all. For me, he had to go anyway, whether it, Rafa was in charge or someone else was in charge. For me, he's not good at his job. He's not good at recognising players. He's not good at rec- recognising value of players and being able to add to a squad. So that was a that was a must anyway. Now, Rafa Benitez, I think that the lads have spoke about it. We spoke about it earlier on, the Luca Dean situation. Mm. If Luca Dean loved Everton that much, he'd have stayed. I need a waiter for Rafa to go because you know in a changing room when a manager's about when he's on his last legs and when he's about to go, you know it. You know it's happening. You can sense it. You feel it, and you think, "Well, I'll stay here and fight for my place because I know he'll be gone soon." And he didn't do that, and that's yeah, that yeah, was a surprise Mich- to me as well. Come in, Stephen. Sorry, Michaelenko. No, no, but you didn't have so to buy him, did you? He brought in a replacement, but he did. He did buy him. Yeah, but he. No, no, but so, what I mean, so yeah, but he Dean's bought him. Thinking, well, this manager. It looked to everyone out from the outside that. Rafa had the power. Yeah, it did. Because he's, he's, he's allowed to bring in a, a replacement. Ben Godfrey had played as a, the, the left back, left wing back. Seamus Coleman had played as a left wing back. So look at Dean's maybe thinking, this manager's got all the power. Is there any point in him staying when he, when he's clearly not wanted? I think yeah, one thing, you, I think you one know thing more than any... saying though, Warney, is that you know, you're right in terms of the players. Some of the players can't all deflect responsibility onto yeah. Rafa. A lot of those players have, have really not stood up. No, you know, you you watch some of the performances; they've been woeful. And actually, you have your own personal pride, in the, whether you like the manager or you not. You know the score when you're on the pitch. You show what you've got, don't you, for yourself and for the supporters. And and some of those you, players you do, have to Danny, look in but the mirror. It becomes very difficult when you're not inspired by that manager and you don't yeah. believe in what the manager's doing. That's yeah. exactly what it looked like as well. Did, yeah. And I understand what you're saying about Mylenko coming in. Who's the better player? If the oh, manager there's goes, no, there's who's no playing? About that. Yeah, yeah, but I, who's I playing? That. So yeah, it doesn't I'm matter whether he comes in or it not. Looks like he's got the and power, the manager. I agree with you yeah. because when players leave and kick up a fuss and leave and put all these posts on, I'm like, just just move, just say, no, like, thanks for your other, service. The other for part, being there, James, I'm, I'm off. And what you know more than anything is Evertonians will speak. They'll, their voices yeah. will will yeah. tell a manager whether he's staying or not. That was, I mean, I can't believe he's waited. He stayed this long. There was no way that Rafa Benitez was was surviving this situation, and everyone could see it from the outside. If I was Luca Dean's agent, I wouldn't have been saying, "Right, we need to get you out." I'd have been saying, "Hold fire, you'll be fine. He'll be gone in a yeah. couple of weeks." Maybe he thought so maybe apparent. he thought the Villa project was more advantageous and going to be that's more successful, more like it, and probably rather than coming money. out yeah. and saying what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, but that's just politics, isn't it? Just looking at some of the messages we're getting, by the way, to 85058 and at 5 Live Sport. Richard, cowardly from Everton's owners. Where do you find someone better? And Everton turning into a trigger-happy checkbook institution who throw money around, then go up in arms at the main man in the dugout when he hasn't given them what they want. Uh, Dom, why would Potter go to Everton, a team in a backroom in disarray over a well-run ship at Brighton? Everton need to get over themselves. Glenn, uh, in fact, this sentence, Stephen, I can imagine maybe quite a lot of people will agree with. Benitez had it coming, although it's not all his fault. No, it's not. But you've got to... When I look at the players, I look at players on the pitch and I look at them and go, disinterested? Yeah. Did Disinterested in what the manager's putting out there? Listen, I've worked for Rafa. Mm. He's hard work. He is. He is hard work. <laughs> Danny, you've had him as well. You know what he's like. He is not a man manager. He's not someone that you walk in the building and he's welcoming, he's warm, and he puts on sessions that you go, this is great, this is challenging me, this is exciting me. He is cold. That is, I mean, that doesn't excite me to go into a building. And I've played under a fair few managers. There's managers where I walk in. I can't wait to go in. I'm excited to see what we're going to do that day. He's completely the opposite. For me, it was it was a lo- what a lot of Evertonians are saying. It was an appointment of he's been there, done it, won trophies. But he's just been in China for two years. We know what <laughs> Rafa's like. He's gone over there, money incentivized. He's lost touch of the European market for two years. How you can keep up with that market, being in China for two years, must have been very difficult. And then to come back and to go to your, your rivals, doesn't, it, it, didn't, it just didn't work for me one bit. Mm. Stephen, I think you're holding back. What, what do you really 
What do you want me to say? No, I think it's great. <laughs> I'm I'm joking. A, I think no, it's great. It, I mean, makes a change that, from me saying it because he got rid yeah, of me. It makes true. me sound bitter. <laughs> no, I know, but listen, there is parts of me that are, are like that towards him because I felt like I could bring more to the football club. But then I go to other managers who get more out of you because mm. they understand your personality. They understand how to get you fitter. They understand how to put you in positions on a pitch that will make you a better player. They make the environment more enjoyable to go into. It's like going into any workplace. If your boss is miserable and he doesn't inspire you, yeah. do you think you, do you think your team of people within that environment are going to work well? I've got this Absolutely problem here not. today with chappers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one, that there. <laughs> Danny, we'll let you go back to your boss then. Thank you for that. What's up, man? Danny. Danny Danny Murphy will be on Match of the Day tonight. BBC One, 10.30, with Mark Chapman and Ian Wright. Uh, We're not moving away from this story. You're going to speak to an Everton fan shortly, James McFadden and Stephen Warnock staying with us. Stephen Warnock still with us, James McFadden still with us. James, the, the name that's on everybody's lips is a guy who you were playing with 15 years ago as a kid at Everton. Wayne Rooney, who of course is doing a phenomenal job at Derby County. What do you think? Yeah, I think it was a bit longer than that as well. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, but I do, I do feel maybe old, like yeah. twenty-five years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Wayne, Wayne's done a, an incredible, a remarkable job at Derby. He really is. Um, he's an Evertonian, and it's, it, I think it's natural um, that, that he's linked with it. Um, but you know, we spoke about. The direction of the club. What 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 direction are the club going in? I think first and foremost there has to be someone in place to steady the ship. There has to be someone that will inspire the players. As Stephen says, you want the players need a lift. They need to be looking forward to getting into training. Um, and I, I haven't been able to see the the full statement, but I would imagine Big Dunk will be involved at, at some point and look at the reaction he got the last time he was interim interim mm-hmm. manager. So I think it has to be someone initially to go and steady the ship and, and, and the, the process has to be done properly because you look at, when Rafa's name was mentioned, the, the uproar from the fans was instant. They made their feelings clear straight away. They did not want him involved. Um, they didn't, I don't think they were inspired by Nuno either. His name was linked. So I think the process has to be done properly. It can't just be, right, who's, who's available? Um, let, let's try it. This has to be done properly because at the minute Everton are in a precarious situation. But they've got good players. They've got good players. They just need a bit of inspiration, a bit of organisation. And they need to show that fight and passion that the fans demand. James, can I just ask you a question about Duncan Ferguson? He's been there for six years now with every manager as the assistant. Why does he survive? Why just because he's a legend at the club? Well, I think sometimes... Well, you've just spoke about... Rafa not having the, the personal skills so if we use that as an example and I think it's clear the way that he's worked at Everton he's a stubborn man and he'll do it his way regardless so I think that people look at that Dunk and see the passion of course he's got the passion but he has been coaching for a long time he's got all these coaching badges he's in, he, he knows football he's been there long enough you listen to Calvert-Lewin the influence that he's had on Dominic Calvert-Lewin the players before him because he knows what he's doing he knows how to get the best out of the players he knows they respond to him um, I, I think that sometimes you get that that tag that yeah because he's a legend he just gets to stay but but I think he's he doesn't get the credit he deserves from me with his game intelligence mm. um, big dunk because you look at him and yeah you, I mean even if he's on the TV you're a, you're, you're a bit scared when you, see, when you see him so <laughs> he does have he is intimidating but He's, he's enthusiastic, he's a great guy, he, he, he really obviously loves the club, but I think that he's, there's more to him than, than the perception. Um, so, and look, the time that he was in charge for that brief spell, there was a reaction from every single player. You could see that they were responding to, to what he was doing. So, I think he survives because if he's used properly, then you know he can be an asset but you know when you're a first team coach or an assistant manager you will have your your opinion and you will have your disagreements when you're trying to you know do your plan for training pick the team 
how things should be done. But ultimately, the manager makes those decisions. So yeah. when, when those arguments are had behind closed doors, as soon as the decision is made, you back the manager in front of people. So you're, you're following a manager. And sometimes you might not agree. A lot of the time you don't agree. Sometimes you don't believe in it. But you have to back them because it's your job to do it. You can't be creating you know, factions in front of people. You have to do that behind closed doors. But when a decision's made, you have to back them. So that, that, that'll be why he's there. But I think, I think Duncan Ferguson is an asset to Everton. The, the other reason, obviously, Stephen, is, uh, you know, do you want to be the person who tells him he's leaving? Listen, I know he's a big fella, <laughs> you know but that's your job. No, I know, but you I'm can't be afraid. Joking. You would be. Yeah, You'd of be course I would be. You'd be joking. Get on with it. I'd be terrified if he's in the studio with me. <laughs> I'd be petrified. That's what you like with Nadem, so imagine oh, well, what you like with him. That's what I'm like with you, so imagine what I'm like with Nadem. Um, uh, Stephen, on, on Wayne Rooney then, because... You know, we we have this this conversation before about about name managers as well, and you know, Stephen Gerrard at Aston Villa, manager has been very successful at Rangers. He's come in as a name. He's inspired people. I'm sure he's a great tactical coach as well. But we've talked about man management. You're saying Rafa didn't have it. Wayne Rooney's got it. If he didn't have it, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing with Derby. No, it certainly looks that way, doesn't it? And he's obviously knows what to what to do to get the best out of the players and, and what makes the players tick. Now, Wayne's an experience. He's he's been very. I say very lucky, he's not very lucky, he's fortunate that he's he's worked under some great managers, so I'm sure he's taken parts of their man management style and, and trying to utilise that as much as he can. When you talk about Steven Gerrard there, what have we seen from Steven Gerrard of late? He can attract names, Yes, people want to work alongside him. That could be key to Wayne Rooney going to an Everton, that they look at that and say, <clears> well, how do we draw players here? What can be the pull? Well, I'm sure a lot of players would like to work with Wayne Rooney and, and, and learn from him as, as much as they can. I think on man management, yeah, we look at the players, but, but it's also dealing with the, the people that work for the club, you know, the Evertonians that are there, galvanising the whole club, because if you've got a manager that's no interest in anybody and it is maybe not approachable to anybody within the club, then the atmosphere's there behind the scenes the players speak to you know the members of staff. The players speak behind the manager's back. That's what happens. You're judging a manager as soon as he comes in, and I think that it's important to to stress that man management isn't just for the players that are on the pitch. The, the guys, you know, the players that are training. It's for the club. It's to create harmony within the club to create a good environment to want to go. Stephen mentioned that you want to turn up. You want to go to work. You want to go and train. You want to do your best. You understand the people in, in and around the club, and I think that's something that has to be done at Everton because, in my time there, it was it was all about the backroom, the people behind the club that, that that made that club run the way it did, allowed the players to turn up every day. It was a brilliant environment. It was hard working at times, and you're not playing. Of course, you don't like the manager when you're not playing, but you do everything you can, and I think that has to, they have to get back to that for Everton to have success. James Steve, I've, yeah, go on. Oh, sorry. No, no. I was just going to say, I've been in a changing room where I've had a manager who's come across the city. I was at Aston Villa when Alex McLeish came across. Mm. Now, one thing with Alex McLeish was he was a brilliant guy. Loved working with him. Loved like being in the building with him. He He knew he was sort of appointed and he knew everyone was against him. But the feeling never went away from around the club. No matter yeah. how good yeah. a guy he was, he still couldn't change it, no matter what he did. He had the players on side, they all liked him. But the feeling amongst fans when you step into that stadium never goes away. Yeah. And that's the problem that you always deal with. Stephen, great to have you on as always. Speak to you soon. Top man. Cheers, pal. Stephen Warnock, who's been with us on Premier League Sunday. We've still got James McFadden. Let's bring in an Everton fan, Matt Jones from the Blue Room podcast. Matt, how are you feeling? I think, to be honest, it's, it's been, as a, a cricket-loving Everton support, it's been the best day, to be honest. But, uh, you know, hopefully better times on the horizon for both. A lot of fans who are getting in touch are, are very supportive of the fact that Rafa Benitez has gone, but also pointing to the fact that there are many, many problems uh, within the club beyond management. Do you think Everton is an attractive job right now to a new manager? Absolutely not. Not, not at all. And it's, it, it goes beyond the... The fact that this is a team that's taken six points in the Premier League since September, there are inherent deep-rooted issues at this football club that, that go well beyond Rafael Benitez. And I think if I was an up-and-coming manager 
who wanted to make me way in the game, I'd look at Everton and go, nah, you're all right. I- I'll take my chances elsewhere. It's, it-, it is an absolute mess. It-, it-, it is such a mess. I think the best way you can sort of summarise it is that Everton appoint Rafael Benitez after getting the director of football for some, a new three-year contract. He subsequently sacked that director of football because he doesn't agree with the philosophy of Rafael Benitez. Rafael Benitez gets rid of the medical department. He gets rid of one of Everton's best players in Luca Dean. He signs two new players in Mikolenko Parson for £30 million. Pounds. He's effectively handed the keys to the castle and a day later he's gone. It's, it's an absolute mess. And Benitez was an awful Everton manager, probably the worst Everton manager of the Premier League era. And that, you know, that, you can say that regardless of his connections with Liverpool or not. That, that's, that's just an absolute fact. But you can go beyond that and say the owner, the chairman, are all still there. And they're, they're the people that are going to be making the decisions going forward at Everton. And while that's still the case, it's hard to see how, how to get out of this mess. What decisions should they make when it comes to the next manager? Who do you want? Who do you realistically think you can get? I think they should appoint a director of football first. Yes. I think that, 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 is, that is absolutely where they need to go because Farhad Mashiri has been getting involved in football decisions pretty much since he's been at the football club and that's, that's six years in February. And since then, the team has got worse and worse and worse up to, to, to the point where we are now. And they need someone who knows football who knows modern football and they need to get someone in who, who can do that job owner and whoever else at the football club needs to take a step back and go do you know what we have believed in this person to appoint them let them get on with the job don't interfere and get your agent mates to sign players like Amber or Argazi and Alex Awobi just let people get on with the job if you believe in these people enough to appoint them to the football club let them crack on with it so I, I would want Everton to go and get director of football first um, I want, and then let that, that person choose the new manager but I think what they need right now is lightning in a bottle. They need to get points to stay in this, this division. You know, Leeds United's win today has put Everton in six deep in the Premier League. And I'm sure there'll be people listening to this going, oh, Everton are going to be absolutely fine. Like I said, six points in September, one win in the last 13 Premier League games. That, that's more than a third of a season. And Everton are, they're, they've been utter free for. So I think for the time being, they need someone to come in who can unite the fan base, who can make Goodison Park a bit of a bit more of a hostile place can give the players a bit of a, a kick up the backside and you know Duncan Ferguson's done that in the past whether he can do it again with this group of players is, is a big ask but you know at the moment it feels as though Everton just need to get three or four or, or five wins needed to get them safe in, in this division and maybe maybe Duncan's the right man to do that in the short term in the long term probably not but Everton can't think about the long term at the moment they yeah. think about staying in this division Matt just in 10 seconds Wayne Rooney yes or no why not? I mean, why not? He's doing an amazing job at Derby. Fans seem to love him. Loves working with young players. You know, if he can continue doing a good job there to see now at the end of the season, get more experience, yeah. and then bring him in in the summer, why not? Thank you, Matt. That's Matt Jones from the Blue Room. James, thank you very much as well. Speak to you soon.